For the June reporting season specifically, ASIC did um, write letters to about 50 companies asking about various aspects of, of their accounting and their financial report. And as many of you may know, um, when ASIC or a company does change their accounting uh, based on one of those letters that ASIC uh, writes, that ASIC does actually issue a press release. And so on this slide, you can see over the past 12 months, here's some of the headlines um, that, that, are, that um, indicate some of the changes that companies have made. And there's about 12 on the slide, and you can see that seven of them are related to impairment. Um, the rest are largely related to revenue. So that's not a big change from what we've seen in the past. And look, I think when we're talking about impairment, um, our messages would be consistent with what they've been in the past. You, you, know, you need to be prepared and, and ready to turn your impairment models over to ASIC. You need to be prepared to be able to support your assumptions. Um, and obviously, um, impairment models are based on budgeting and forecasts. And so ASIC's really interested in understanding, you know, can you actually uh, do accurate budgets and forecasts? And how do you demonstrate that? Um, and look, I think with revenue, we're going to see even more and more questions come up on revenue as the new standard comes into play. Um, so those are some of the things that are the same. Um, when I think about what's different, so we are seeing a lot more focus on the ASX 20. Um, we're also seeing ASIC focus a bit on private companies. So it is important to remember um, just because you're private doesn't mean you're kind of off the radar. For every June and December reporting period, they do issue um, an alert that shows where they're going to be focused. Um, so we haven't seen that yet for June, um, but on the slide you'll see uh, what they were focused on for December. And so I don't expect there'll be significant changes, but we'll, we'll have to see when it comes out. Um, so on this slide you can see we have a list of some of the usual suspects. So these are some of the things that we've been seeing and talking about for several years now. Um, a few of those being revenue and impairment, which we just talked about. Um, but some of them that are perhaps a bit new that I just wanted to highlight is obviously the focus on really disclosing the impact of new accounting standards. And, and so the new accounting standards are here now. And, and ASIC is continuing to remind us we really need to be communicating with the, with the market and investors what the impacts of those standards are. Um, also operating in financial review. So they're just reminding us here that we need to, or companies need to be really clear in um, disclosing those risks that, that could potentially impact their performance or financial position in the future. Um, so whether that's cybersecurity or climate change or, or really other areas of disruption in the industry, uh, making sure that those, those are drawn out. And we're also seeing ASIC use the, the operating financial review a bit more when looking at impairment models to, to really see that there's consistency with how people are modeling and, and how they're actually talking about the business. And then lastly, I did mention on the, the last slide that you know, they have been writing to private companies. And so one area that we have seen this is in the last year, they have written to about a thousand private companies who have not lodged financial reports. And, and really ASIC is questioning, um, have you actually tripped up the thresholds to where you should actually be lodging financial reports? And I think in many cases, ASIC was probably right. Um, and people haven't necessarily had their, their eye on the radar with respect to when they trip over some of those thresholds. So, so certainly if you're not lodging financial reports, important to keep your eye on that. Thank you.